So what is this? Okay, imagine that you have a coordinate system, a Cartesian coordinate system, a point. Of course, that point in Cartesian coordinates is characterized by the three coordinates, x, y, and z. Okay? But then it could be also characterized by three different measures, which are not the, the coordinate, the Cartesian coordinates. One would be that distance, the distance of the point to the axis z. That is called r, the radius. Okay? Then it could be also characterized by this angle. If I trace, project that point onto this plane, and I obtain that angle, which crows look at that direction, in that sense, that is what is called the azimuth angle, theta. And then the third coordinate, coordinate is the elevation, that distance here. It's clear that in the same way that every point of this space can be characterized by a unique x, y, and z, every point of this space can be also uniquely characterized by the three values, r, theta, and z. What is the relation? These ones here. So if I know theta, r, and z, I can know x, y, and z. Okay? Okay, that's what we call the cylindrical coordinate system. This is a system of coordinates curvilinear. What is called curvilinear system? Well, look, it's the concept of coordinate lines. Coordinate lines is something that one obtains in a point when we, one keep constant the coordinate. For instance, if I in, I'm, I'm in that point, and I keep constant, uh, sorry, I keep constant the other two coordinates, x and z, and keep the, const the, the coordinate y variable, I obtain a line like that, which is y coordinate. If I, I'm in that point, and in that point in the space, I keep constant the y and z coordinate, I would obtain one line, which would be that, which is an x coordinate, etc. So, in a system of coordinates, when considering two of the three coordinates constant, fixed, and varying the third, I obtain lines. Okay, let's look how are the lines, the coordinates right here. So what is the R coordinate? If I, in that point, I keep the other two coordinates, theta and z, fixed, what do I obtain? I obtain a straight line like that, right? This is called the R coordinate line. In that point, now, keeping the coordinate r fixed and the coordinate, coordinate z fixed, I vary theta, I obtain this parallel, like that, this circle. This is called the theta coordinate line. And in that point, I keep r and theta fixed and I vary z, I obtain this third coordinate line. So at every point, we can consider that there are three coordinate lines, which are obtained keeping fix two of them and find the other. What is specific of this system of coordinates and that they are orthogonal. Look, the, the, that coordinate line, the tangent of this coordinate line and the tangent of this coordinate line define a local system which is orthogonal, orthogonal. That is why this mm, system of coordinates are called orthogonal system of coordinates. Because the coordinate lines that they de de define are orthogonal. And that makes much easier the working with this system of coordinates. Why? Because I could consider that at every point, I have a local system of Cartesian coordinates. Coordinate x prime is the one which is defined by the local vector er, tangent to the r coordinate line. Coordinate y prime is the one tangent to the theta coordinate line, and coordinate z prime is tangent to the theta coordinate line. So, in other words, essentially, working, which looks complicated, working with this uh, curvilinear system of coordinates is relatively the same as working in Cartesian coordinates, the only difference is that at every point, the Cartesian system of coordinates changes. That's it. So if I want to compute what are the uh, given vector, what are the components of that vector in that point <coughs> in cylindrical coordinates? Well, they are just the components 
<coughs> these coordinates x prime, y prime, and c prime. Okay? And the same point is about the tensor. What are the components of a certain tensor in the cylindrical coordinate systems? Just the components of the tensor in this local basis. When I change the point, the basis changes. But the concept is the same. Okay? So everything remains the same. By the way, uh, some other issues associated to cylindrical coordinate systems is the definition of the differential of volume. A differential of volume is obtained by incrementing the three coordinates, r, theta, and z. So starting from that point, if I increment the coordinate r, I go to that point. That is an edge. If I increment differential of theta, theta I move one quantity, which is r differential of theta, on this coordinate, this that one. If I move one differential into the coordinate z, is that. So on the basis of that, I can construct this parallel pipette, which is a curvilinear parallel pipette like that. Okay, so the uh, edges, the angles are orthogonal, but some of the edges are curvilinear. That is what is called a differential of volume in cylindrical coordinates. And that differential of volume, by the way, can be computed as r, differential of theta, that length, times differential of r, of r, that length, which provide this area, times differential of z. Okay? So, now that you know what are the cylindrical coordinate system, maybe you can think of another curvilinear coordinate, uh, uh, orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system. Which one? The, the spherical, spherical coordinate system. A spherical coordinate system places a point and identifies the point by three numbers, which are one, the radius, the distance to the origin, the other, that angle, theta, that's called the zenith angle. Look, the theta comes from z to down, is following that direction. No? So the positive increase of theta is in that sense clockwise, okay? And finally, the azimuthal angle, which is phi, which is angle. If I know the three angles, I know the x, y, and z. Those are the, 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 the relations. By the way, what are the coordinate line, lines associated to the spherical system? Look, if I keep theta and phi constant, and I just vary r, I obtain one line like that. This is the r coordinate line. If I keep r constant and, phi and, and theta constant and I move phi, I obtain this line. By the way, looking at the Earth's surface, that would be a what? That line, how do we call that line in the Earth's surface? How? A parallel. Okay? And by the way, if I just keep theta and, uh, 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 sorry, exactly, phi and r constant, and I change theta, I obtain this circumference. How is that called? A meridian. So that's why this system of coordinates, by the way, is used in geographic issues. Because everything is easy to be described when it's related to the Earth, to that. It's much more complicated in coordinate. In coordinate could be. But it's much more complicated to do it in coordinate, co in cylindrical coordinates or in Cartesian coordinates. Anyway, so the three coordinate lines are the radius, the parallel, and the meridian. And they are orthogonal. So they define a local co Cartesian system, x prime, in the directions of r. Y prime, look, in that direction, look that the positive sense follows the increase of theta. Why that's important is not that direction. Is that direct is not that direction sense. Is that sense? And phi also increases in that sense. So finally this defines the spherical system of coordinates.